what did you learn about video game business from this experience? Uh, the video game business is no different than TV and movie. It has its own its own ebb and flow. It has, you know, people like it for for different reasons. They're obviously, they're hardcore. I mean, one of the things that you can say about the video game guys because they're used to playing with console and digital, and you're looking at videos up there. They're very engaged on the internet a lot, right? So they're they come back and they do a lot of follow up. Uh, the the online gaming uh, is, is a huge community which is kind of cool, which is completely different. I mean, when, when you're doing TVs and movies, you're basically a passive viewer, right? The director and the producer basically tell you everything. You have no input. Where video games, the biggest kind of coolest part about it is that you're the one that's sort of steering the action. You're the director. I mean, we build the characters and the props. You're the director, and you can sit there and play for three hours and do whatever you want, especially like in Reckoning, it was a role-playing game go on whatever adventure you want, right? And our job is to just make sure that when you get there, it's sort of interesting along the way. So I, I like the, the social aspect uh, of the video games and whether you can turn that into some kind of business, you know, we're going we're gonna to see in the next four or five years. Talk about interaction. Uh, have, we just learned that some of these toys that you're working with, Ubisoft, they have um, codes in them that are allowing gamers to uh, get very exclusive items through McFarlane Toys. Can you talk about a little bit about that? Yeah, well, again, I mean, one of the things you're doing if you're working close with your partners, and Ubisoft, as I mentioned, have been very, very generous. Uh, you know, we're always having a conversation. Is there any way that we can somehow tie the toys and ancillary product into the video game? Now, what you don't want to do, it's a fine line, because what you don't want to do, you don't want to frustrate the, the hardcore gamer. He's paid good money. He doesn't want to say, "What? I'm not getting the whole. I'm not getting the whole cake. I paid for it. I got to go buy something else to get it." So, wait, but but is there anything you can give us that is is just even sometimes a visual, not necessarily a power upgrade or anything like that or a move. It might just be you know a sword that you might not get anyplace else. That if you happen to now support the side properties, in this case, our toys then you can get that code that unlocks it and you get something that you can punch in and get into the game that you can't get if you're not buying the product, you know, and and have a little bit of fun with it. So we're, we're going to see where where you can have a lot of fun and, and, and where where the fun and the frustration, if you will, I guess, sort of meet. Uh, and and I'm sure we'll cross and, and miss it a couple of times before we go, there's the sweet spot that's in there. What video games are you playing nowadays? Uh, you know what? I'm, I I usually sit and watch my my boy play his video game. He he he, he play. He's the biggest Assassin's player. He plays uh, uh, Call of Duty, uh, lots of Halo, and uh, and surprisingly, with all that sophisticated stuff that he plays, he's 13. He still does a lot of Minecraft. You know that I just go. It seems weird that you go from that super sophisticated games that I just mentioned. And then you go to this sort of quasi Lego, digital Lego thing that he, he'll do and build stuff for, for hours and hours and hours. So. What would you like to see in the new PlayStation Xbox consoles coming later this year? What would I like to see? Wow, I, I you know, not a giant gamer, so I, I, I don't know what's bugging people out there. I, uh, Maybe a new uh, Spawn uh, game? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, everything has a time and place. And again, like I said, I mean, I had three people at the show sort of say, hey, Todd, I want to talk to you about the license. I just think that it, it, you need to wait until there's a reason to do it. And, and it, because then for two, you know, the biggest reason more than anything else, because then you got people going, looking for it. And then it, on the retailer shelves, it, it sells and the retailers are happy. And there's, there's, there's two relationships that I have to keep happy. I have to keep it happy with the consumer. But I also have to keep the retailer happy because he's a guy putting it on the shelf. So so first step is just convincing him to put it on the shelf. And then he's going, good, Todd, now that I put it on the shelf, the consumer better come and get it, right? So so there's two big steps you have. And if one of those two doesn't do their job, then they don't want any more products. So I, I got a lot of fans that like Spawn, but the, the I don't think it would go at a, as big a rate as if Spawn was on TV and or in the in the theaters right now. What role does gaming play with comics today? I mean, there's a bit of a crossover. There's a bit of a crossover. I wouldn't say that there's a, a strong relationship with it right now. 
there's no, I wouldn't say there's, a, there's any simpatico going on. I mean, some big video games have licensed out to make comic books, but nobody is, nobody has figured out what the dance is. I think there's a, a way closer dance between toys and video games that you can do some interactive stuff there with them. But, uh, you know, I, I mean, other than it's just all cool creative stuff, uh, I, don't, I, don't see, I don't see a big connection right now. What would you say about the Walking Dead series? Because there's a, a game out that kind of cross-correlates between the comic book for Walking Dead. Have you got a chance to check that out? Uh, no, but Robert, you know, Kirkman, the creator, I, I talked to him once a week. Uh, and he, he, he's pretty happy with it. So, and, and, but, I, I, you know, it, it's, again, uh, buyer beware a little bit. That there are certain properties where certain things work. And, and it, that lightning doesn't strike. I mean, whenever you talk about toys, when people get really excited, they always start dropping the word that you should never use, which is Star Wars, right? Star Wars is its own universe. It worked, right? The heavens parted, something happened, the miracle came, and it's, gone, and it's like, and, it, and those happen like once a millennium almost. So there are a couple properties where it will work, and, and Walking Dead, I think, can be one of them. But it doesn't then instantly mean that if it goes out to the marketplace, and it's successful, you can then go and grab 10 properties that are quote-unquote comic book properties, and they're also going to work.